Hi guys, Figure Boy here, back with another video. Uh, no more park reviews uh, for a while until Christmas, actually. I have ordered two for Amazon, but chances are they're probably going to arrive after Christmas rather than before, which is really, really annoying. And then it occurred to me that rather than have you without any brilliant fantastic figure boy uploads because i'm sure you've been you've been desperate for them because i know i did an update and frankly that was more so just to be like hey i am still alive or whatever i just have nothing to review and then thinking back you know because i showed off a comic book i thought now that i've actually finished this one and that one which i finished ages ago but i finished this one recently i thought you know what why not discuss these two comic books? Because it's not like I haven't had some thoughts about them. Uh, bear in mind, I've uh, kind of forgotten some stuff. But, I mean, uh, I suppose I don't have to go too much into detail, to be honest. It's more so just the introduction of some of the iconic Spider-Man villains. Because this is, obviously, these essential comic books are basically the original issues. Um, so, issues um, one to um 20 in this one and 21 to two i assume that says 43 because sometimes it's almost the fun it look, makes it look a bit like an eight from the distance all right it's 43 okay and you've got some annuals in here as well because i just realized that spider-man appeared in a different comic book before um but i think they basically do like a recap so, so i think i've got the first oh no amazing fantasy Okay, so you do have Amazing Fantasy in here. Okay, that's weird, because it just says issues 1 to... Have I just, have I just ripped it? Please don't have just ripped it. Oh, it's an old book anyway. Unless it doesn't... Oh, man. That is annoying. As long as the cover doesn't come off. Didn't mean to do that. Anyway, um... Right, so here's the other ones, um... Here that you can get, but... Um... Yeah, it's quite outdated, so, you know, good luck uh, trying to get them if you can. Because I think you can get these through um, eBay and stuff for um, uh, cheap. Well, I say cheap, usually about. Cheapest, I think you can probably get them as well. Actually, well, cheap, cheap. I can't remember how I got cheap, cheap. That's Mario. Right. Uh, when I say um, cheap, I think, I think I got this for about like 12 quid on Amazon, I think. I think you can get them about 15 quid. I mean, 20 quid seems to be uh, the max. Well, max. You can get more than that, really. But, I mean, if you want to get the... I mean, the highest I'm prepared to go is, like, 20 quid. But it'd have to be a, a volume actually really, really... You know, I'd rather get it cheaper than that. I mean, 20 quid is just... Seems, uh, you know, I suppose, I suppose fair for one of these. But, um, anyway... Uh, Let's just get to the point, shall we? So uh, I might cut this video into bits uh, rather than try to do it in one long go. But um, yeah, I got this one. Um, I wanted to get this version because it had Green Goblin on it. I just really like the artwork for this one. Because I know you can get like the colour versions of these issues in the Epic collections, but they're like really expensive. Like, and some of them are like out of print. What also doesn't make any sense is why Kingpin is on the back of this, but he doesn't even appear at all in this volume but still good artwork uh whatever so yeah let's just oh yeah uh also uh, need to mention because i keep forgetting uh they're all black and white um these ones so yeah um hence you can get the color versions in the epic collections but i read the walking dead in black and white for years and years and even after the walking dead deluxe i'm starting to think that the black and white versions are probably better but i'm still gonna get them anyway anyway Let's uh, get to it, shall we? Okay, so starting off with um, Volume 1. I am never going to forgive myself for what I did. Look at that. Luckily, this only seems to... You only seem to notice this ripped problem in the first opening lot of pages, so it doesn't spread to the rest of the comic book, but like COVID, um, to the rest of the globe. Uh, but yeah, thank God. Thank God for that. Anyway, um, it was already pre-owned, but that's annoying. Oh, you know, there's damage. This is God. 
Right, um, so yeah, uh, there's many different versions of the Essential uh, comics, so you may notice, hey, the cover for Volume 2 is different. Yeah, that's because there's almost these different versions, hence why I picked a different version for the, the Volume 2. Plus, I'm not going to be able to collect them all, so in terms of actual consistency, it ain't going to really matter, because I'm only intending to get Volume 3 now, which I hope to get the uh, original version, like uh, these, some of the X-Men comics I've got. Where they're like black, red, and blue, if you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I uh, do a separate video on that one. I, I might do a graphic novel collection once I get more comic books. But um, and then you'll probably understand. But if you've seen the background of my uh, uh, room in update videos, you may know what I'm talking about. But it doesn't matter. But anyway, you can get, long story short, you can get different covers, and that's the ones I chose. But I do like that cover there. It was this kind of retro feel to it. Um, compared to that one. Anyway, uh, so the right. So all the issues um, that are included in this um, or annuals, whatever, are all listed here. So it's almost, it's almost like a con well, not contents page, but almost, almost helps me keep track of how many issues I've got left to read. Right. I don't understand why they don't mention that they've got Amazing Fantasy on the front here. But it, it does include it, so it doesn't matter. But I have, I think I have Amazing Fantasy 1 in, like, this other book, which, which has all these, almost these superhero debuts and stuff. Anyway, so it's the same with Dark Phoenix. I've got, like, two lots of the Dark Phoenix storyline from X-Men. Because I've got the book with just the Dark Phoenix storyline in it, all in colour. And I've got one of these essential X-Men books with the whole arc in it again. So I might end, if I'm going to, I might end up reading Dark Phoenix again in that book. It's supposed to be like this really good arc, but sometimes I just lose track of the bloody story. Right, so um, right, so this is the introduction to Spider-Man. At this point, you should know what happened. So he's bit by radioactive spider. He's a nerd, and he gets superpowers. And Uncle Ben dies. Spider that. So yeah, and then obviously you have the last line. What was, what was it? I don't know where it says it. With great power comes great responsibility. It says it here, I think. Yeah. And a lean, silent figure slowly fades into the gathering darkness, aware at last that in this world with great power, there must also come great responsibility. There you go. The only time I've been able to read something about stuttering. All right. Um, here you go. Sad times of Spider-Man. Oh, wait, he's not sad here. All right. And that's when you get into it. Um... With the Fantastic Four, that I also love the Fantastic Four. You got Susan Storm here. Let's see if we can find the color version of this. But um, the thing is, my favorite Fantastic Four character, so not Susan Storm. Funnily enough, um, yeah. So let's talk about the characters, shall we? So is it me? But Aunt May looks really old for an aunt. She looks like a granny. What the fuck? Right, anyway, I'm surprised it's not me here to judge, because they, they de-aged her in the MCU. And then you've got Happy Hogan simping over her, so yeah. I can't complain about that, because I obviously ain't going to simp over the, the original version. And even in the Spider-Verse, they kind of made her seem less like an old granny. I mean, still had that old granny look to her, but I don't even know what's going on. But anyway, you've got Flash um, Thompson here, over here. He's like the body, and it's almost ironic, because it's almost like... I hate you, Peter Parker. You're you're a nerd and all that. And then and then um, but and he's like a big fan of Spider Man. It's almost like he has some kind of childish obsession with him. Almost like one of those fanboy kind of things. It's almost like Spider Man is the best. Full stop. Don't diss him. And obviously Spider Man, I think gets a job for the Daily Bugle. And obviously you got J Jonah J Jane J Jonah Johnson. J J J Jonah Jameson. There you go. Uh, who basically sees Spider-Man as a menace. And, you know, he's... Uh, I was going to do a Dennis the Menace joke, but I can't think... I was going to call him Spanish the Menace. So that's Stannis the Menace from the Game of Friends. Well, that kind of joke doesn't really work, does it? Oh, yeah, and they split them into parts. All right. Okay, so Mary Jane does not appear at all in the in this volume, because Mary Jane doesn't uh, come, on, come along... Come along... Come along... Come, come on... Uh, Come along till much later. Here we have the vulture. I have a, a vulture book. Um, a vulture book, as in the vulture, like a 
I think it's like a compendium of some of the original Vulture stories, so I've got some of these in colour as well. So, uh, in, I think, in the case of, um, I think Marvel Comics, maybe I would have preferred to read to read, to read them in colour. I don't know why I keep stuttering. Um, but I suppose this is probably much, fingers in the way, um, it's a much better option really if you want to get them for a cheaper price i suppose a little bit of color can't be that. well a little bit of black and white can't be too bad so yeah dr octopus right so okay let's actually talk about the stories themselves so they always seem to kind of follow a similar structure really it's all it's always um um well Sp spider-man being a teenager oh <coughs> some villain comes along and then J. Jonah Jameson is almost like Spider Man's bad afterwards. It's all, I think mean, I like. Most of the animated series where it's always. I don't know, because it's obviously. The animated series is based off the comic books, so it's almost. Um, so yeah. And. Um, so Spider Man has to fight the villain, get some photos, end the story. There you go. Well, also, you know, being Peter Parker is normal. Okay, and that's when we get into. Um, Okay, so his love interest then. Because you had Liz. I can't remember what her name was. I can't remember what that was. Liz something. Um, yeah, who I think she. I think she's more into uh, Flash Thompson, I think. Alright, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but no one's going to correct me. Right, um. So I'm trying to find um, Betty Brandt. Oh, okay, Electra is not one of my favourite villains. Right. And the Enforcers. Yeah, seems like your typical um um roadman, right? Uh, trying to find. Okay, here she is. So, uh, Betty was the love interest of uh, Peter Parker down when he worked at the uh, Daily Bugle. Uh, he, I suppose, it didn't work out um because um well, I suppose Spider Man was always worried um oh, what would Betty think of me if if she found out she's Spider-Man, because she's a nervous wreck or whatever, and then she gets with Ned Leeds, who's much skinnier, and in the, um, oh, cause one of the Sinister Six, but the Sinister Six aren't established yet. Right, so, yeah, that was all. So they, they, they split. Well, obviously, you should know that. So don't even come at me with spoilers. Right, um, and Daredevil, another one of my favourite Marvel heroes. I mean, well, he's kind of underrated, in my opinion. I mean, I I watched the Daredevil um TV series in um the the Netflix one, and I thought that it kind of felt really dragged out. I just found the character really interesting, and he's in his original outfit here, which I believe is yellow and red, which I've got to pop off. I don't have him in his normal uh, costume. He just looks really cool. I probably won't get a, an essential volume for him, but I do really like him as a character, and I really hope they implement him in the MCU again. I wanted him to be in the new Spider-Man movie, but that's probably not going to happen, because if I look for it, it's going to be another one of those shitty films where they brought back the old Electro. I actually had no problem with the Amazing Spider-Man, to be honest. I mean, probably not the best, but I, I, I mean, I used to simp over Gwen Stacy. Probably, probably would still do if it made Spider Man still a thing, but anyway, um, but it makes you realize how weird, um, Tobey Maguire looked really, but I still like him, right? Um, let's carry on, all right? I suppose there's no real ending, but I suppose that's really it for that volume, and I think, oh, yeah, Sandman. <sighs> <laughs> what the hell? What's going on with my face? What is wrong with your face? <laughs> what the hell? Okay, it really makes Betty stand out a lot more there, doesn't she? <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's get on to volume two, uh, where we basically talk about some other stuff. Oh, yeah, and that reminds me, rest in peace to Stanley. Uh, got this bit at the end, uh, basically how Stanley... Um, and Steve Ditko used to come up with the comic book back in the day, which is an extra nice thing, I suppose. 
So yeah, and all the, every issue, you know, I think I might go go, go on, go along with that in the next one. We'll basically talk about uh, all the issue covers and the kind of, and, and stuff like that. Anyway, let's get on to part two, shall we? As in part two, as in volume two. And now I cut again. I'm starting to think that maybe I should have done this video when I actually had the Spider-Man blanket rather than the Clone Wars and TARDIS duvet. Hmm. Oh well. I suppose it puts more focus on the comic book Spider-Man rather than my... Well, not shitty blanket. There's actually a story to the Spider-Man blanket. But I ain't going to go into that. Anyway, um... Right, so now we've got volume two. Um... And I noticed there's another bloody misprint. They've printed four where well, the essential Wolverine Volume 1 should be. So, yeah, I noticed that because there's a similar problem with my Walking Dead Deluxe issue where they've printed the wrong issue on the back and even put issue two. So, they obviously made some big, massive mistakes. So, um, but I ain't going to try to fix it. I, I didn't try to fix the other one. So, yeah, I think I decided. In this case, it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to buy a replacement volume all just because there's so many misprints. Because I honestly don't really care in this case for Marvel. And it's more so for the Walking Dead comic. Because there's really no excuse for such a silly misprint. But anyway, um, I'll leave, I'll, I'll, the issue wasn't too bad. But I don't know. Annoying. Anyway, let's go back to talking about Spider Man. Um, I think for this one, I think we'll talk about um, Green Goblin. Okay, here's Flash Thompson. Oh, no, Flash Thompson again. No, that's, that's bloody Johnny Storm. Sorry, for it, I thought that was um, Flash Thompson because of the blonde hair and that kind of that look to him. Anyway, um, it's also he's basically talking to a girl and she basically she's basically like can you go like a, a day without using your seat uh, uh, why isn't she a bigger character these days anyway um let's carry on um right so there's a lot of green goblin this um volume um and we get to see the introduction of gwen stacy Norman Osborn and Mary Jane for the first time. Oh, that doesn't look good. Right. Um, I want this. I I want to. I, I just realised how long this video is. I think Hulk and Doctor Strange make appearances in this. Uh, and I think I'll show off Hulk at the end because it's the final thing has the Hulk in. Right. Um. So yeah. Uh, let me just get to the end. I want to show off the Norman Osborn. All right. Okay. We're getting closer now. And I can basically, yeah, so Norman Osborn makes an appearance and basically unmasks Spider-Man. And of course, he gets amnesia, so he forgets. And then I'm guessing his memory probably returns. So yeah, um, oh yeah, we get to see Harry Osborn in this as well. Because I really want to show off Gwen Stacy, you know, I'm not going to, this video comes to about half an hour, 25 minutes, it comes to half an hour. I'm sure you can just pause if you haven't already. Right. Anyway, uh, my good friend is messaging me while I'm doing this, so, um, so yeah, I apologise to you if I'm taking, uh, to you, uh, you'll know who you are, um, uh, for leaving you on, unread for a bit, but I have to see your messages now, but I want to finish this video first. Right, um, sorry about that, um, yeah, where is, um, where is, um, Gwen Stacy, she looks like really old in this. Because these characters look like about, it's almost like the same age as the Riverdale characters, like in their 20s. Alright, anyway. Please tell me I can find a panel. I know I'm sounding really bad now, but. Oh yeah, just saw a face that I bet you go. <gasps> right, where is it? Oh my god. Okay, here she is. There she is. This isn't exactly the panel I wanted. I didn't realise that Gwen Stacy appeared before Mary Jane Watson. I thought he went out with Mary Jane first. But he goes out with both of them in the end because he's a player. That's what he is. I wish I was cool like Spider-Man. Okay, this is one of the other panels. She looks a bit weird. She looks as though she could be Kingpin's wife. But Oh yeah, we see Franklin Nelson. Uh, 
So he's fat in this as well. Okay, no offense. I love I love Vardy Nelson. Right. Um. Right, that, that's okay. And this is one thing I wanted to talk about because Gwen for this basically just uh, in the comic is basically like, um, is basically like um. Uh oh, why is Peter Parker just ignoring everyone? Because I mean, he was dealing with you know Mary. Uh, Aunt Mary had um health problems at the time. I uh, and but Mary James really annoys me. She looks good. But pardon me, it's almost in your face. Oh, you just hit the jackpot. I'm some hearty. Yeah, I I know I'm hot. And she's already calling him PT and stuff. And oh, I'm I'm an actress and I'm really talented. It's almost like this. Stanley was almost just trying to stress how hot she's supposed to be and how he's been putting off this date like forever. And Peter's obviously over the moon. Just look at that. He's always like, man, wow. Tell me about yourself, Mary Jane. How come I've never run into you before? You can tell this is almost like the 60s. Flipping hell. I don't even know whether this makes her a strong female or this is just... I'm starting to sound like a feminist now. I mean, obviously, I believe in equality and all that, but uh, not in the extreme sense. Right, um, and social justice, social justice warrior, where it seems their idea of equality is remove all the all the um, privileged people when just because we're part of that group doesn't make us privileged because some of us are loners and live in our rooms watching films and stuff. And, you know, and how all of us aren't actually, you know, that fortunate as you think we are. Right, anyway, I suppose that's all I really have to say here. And there's Hulk. This is the issue where the, the Avengers want to recruit him. And I didn't know who that woman was supposed to be, but apparently she's supposed to be the Wasp. And that's, like, a kind of giant man kind of guy, I don't know. But that's my favourite for giving her... Oh, he looks like he's giving her a hug. He's, give, he's just patting Spider-Man on the back, by the looks of it. Yeah, join us. Join us. Anyway, so that's it. But hopefully I'll get some more. I think for now I just want to get that one and another Fantastic Four. Not that one, I've got that one. And the other Spider-Man. I suppose that'll be it. I love how you've got like almost got like a checklist. Good luck trying to collect these. I think you'd be able to track the books down by the ISBNs, but they're probably all out of stock at Waterstones. Anyway... Thanks for watching, and um, we end it off with Kingpin. Yay. I would do an impression, but it's just going to make it cringy. I was going to end that review on this image. Oh, wait, I did a really good review then. Review. Impression. I hope you think this review is good. I never know how to end the video, so I'm going to start rambling. Bye.